We're in Tate, Britain, and we're looking at John Everett Millay's really important early pre-Raphaelite painting, Christ in the House of His Parents. The pre-Raphaelites wanted to strip away all of the traditions of painting that had accumulated, almost like heavy layers of varnish, on um, painting since the Renaissance, since Raphael. And nowhere is that more clear than in this painting. So what we see here is Christ as a child. He's wounded himself. We see a drop of blood clearly foreshadowing the crucifixion. And we see Mary, his mother, comforting him and also, I think, being comforted by him. And then we also see St. John the Baptist and also Joseph, who's also tending to Christ. He's showing us Christ not in an idealized environment, but in a workshop that reminded contemporary viewers of what a carpenter's workshop in mid-19th century England looked like, a kind of specificity that showed that he was really looking. So it's not idealized at all, it's not softened, it's not made more beautiful, and all of that really went against traditional treatments of the Holy Family, of Mary and Christ and St. Joseph and St. John. Since the time of Raphael and Leonardo, those figures were truly idealized in a way that reflected their divine status. So by taking Taking that away, that idealization away, I think it felt to Victorian viewers as though Millet had undermined the spirituality of these figures. You know, all of that is true, but there are some exceptions. If we think back to the work, for instance, of Caravaggio, you have an artist that is taking spiritual figures and placing them in a world that was concrete, that was low, that was real, but he was still ensconcing them in a kind of spiritual darkness. And here it's as if Millet has turned the lights on in a Caravaggio, and he's giving us this brilliant spotlight on the specificity, even of the dirt under the fingernails. And that was certainly something that was recognized by Victorian viewers. This painting was attacked by Charles Dickens, of all people, who wrote, in the foreground of that very carpenter's shop is a hideous, wry-necked, blubbering, red-headed boy in a bedgown who appears to have received a poke in the hand from the stick of another boy with whom he has been playing in an adjacent gutter and to be holding it up for the contemplation of a <laughs> kneeling woman so horrible in her ugliness that she would stand out from the rest of the company as a monster in the vilest cabaret in France or the lowest gin shop in England. It's so interesting to hear Dickens actually turn against the kind of specificity that the artist is rendering since it's so much a part of his own literature. But it does speak to expectations in the 19th century about what art should be at this moment when the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood was trying to remake those expectations. And so if you look at the painting carefully, you can see that the figures have an angularity. They move in ways that feel very different from the gracefulness and elegance of Renaissance figures. There's a linear hardness to the way that Millet has created their contours. And that hardness reminds us of Flemish painting from before Raphael, from, say, the early 15th century. There's really this self-conscious reviving of those ideas. And just like in that northern Flemish painting, we also have borrowed this notion that one can imbue ordinary objects with symbolism. And this is a painting that is full of symbolism. For instance, if we look just over the young Christ's head, we can see on the back wall, there's a, a carpenter's triangle. Just over Christ's head, that triangle means something. It means the Trinity. And we might look at the ladder in the background and think about the ladder that we see in images of the descent from the cross, where the followers of Christ climb a ladder in order to remove the nails and bring him down from the cross. We can see those nails, but also on that ladder there's a dove, a reference to the ultimate baptism of Christ where the Holy Spirit will appear, who's always represented as a dove. And we see St. John the Baptist actually on the right carrying a bowl of water. So there is this kind of vivid rendering of all of these forms, all of these people with a kind of particularity that is not idealized, that makes them all the more true, all the more vivid. And so we can immediately imagine why the Victorians had such problems with this painting.